Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, did you ever notice in your life, I don't, maybe you haven't noticed it in your life, but in my life, um, it's like whenever I see someone come to me and they start to say like three or four words, I always finish it all the sentences for them. Do you ever notice, do you ever have a friend that if you're, if you're like arguing with them, they, they wait for you to pause so they can, you know, interject their part. And then, and then you're like, they didn't listen to me at all. They just, they just told me exactly what, what's wrong. And, and, so, and so there's this, it's always a given, right? If you, when you see that person. And so then we, we tend to form a habit, right? With other people in our life. And, uh, and we begin to repeat processes over and over and over. And sometimes we're guilty of uh, prejudging somebody based on an experience we had in the past, right? And so I begin, I begin, it's called prejudice or prejudging, okay? So there's always a, a prejudging that happens uh, over and over. So we, we, we develop cycles, right, in, 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 in talking to people. We develop cycles in listening to people. We, we develop cycles of, uh, of, of behavior that sometimes we're not actually really familiar with until, some, until we're confronted with something. Sometimes I think... Uh, God, God is, uh, is so gracious and so kind to us, but sometimes I think he, 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 he allows certain things to come into our life to stop us from doing the same thing over and over and over again. And so what we, what we see here uh, is, is, a, uh, is, is, is a proverb or, or an explanation of a, of a, of a parable that he began to 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 give to all, all of the people the same, and it was a, a parable of the seed, okay, and how that the word of God is like a seed, the kingdom of God is like a seed that's sown, and so sometimes seeds are sown in our life that, that never mature, because something steals it away, something will come and take it away from you, other seed will go into your heart, and, and sometimes, and I, I've preached another message on that, that particular topic before, but how that sometimes when we were young, when we were little, somebody spoke a seed or a word into your life and you took the word inside of you and you began to nurture the word even if it was wrong okay even if the word was wrong and you became something based on the seed that was planted in your life and you became something that you should not have been okay i found myself in the wrong place with the wrong people doing the wrong thing wanting to do this and wanting to expect in that and and so, so I, wanted to, I want to come and really confront that a little bit in your life, and I want to try to pull roots a little bit, okay? And I want to try to give you something else to, to grow in your life. Tell, tell me this isn't true. Jesus wants to be the Word, right? He's the Word made flesh, and He comes and dwells in us, and that, that, dwelling in, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit is what will produce something awesome in your life if we will allow it to grow, amen? if we will nurture that relationship and let it grow. Most of the time we want what we don't have and what we have, we don't want. Come on, because I, I, I like, I like y'all in my life, but sometimes I wish there were more people, okay? I wish there were other people, prettier people, better looking people, okay? And sometimes God brings people into our life that we don't really like and the reason we don't like him is because they're trying to he's trying to change you and change me and change my direction a little bit and expand my vision and, and cause me to grow up and become something i was not before he brought them into my life amen okay turn your neighbor right there that's a good point right there and just say i don't know why god's got you here i don't know why you gotta be so ugly but but god brought God brought you for a purpose, amen? He brought you for a purpose, and there's a plan behind what God is doing in your life if you will just allow him to move, amen? This is, this is a great clue why we're not happy. <laughs> this is such a great clue because sometimes we're just not happy. You, do, you guys got a friend, I won't look at anybody. Do you, got, do you got a friend? I'll look on the camera. Do you guys got a friend out there somewhere that, you know, that you're just, you're, they're just never happy? Do you ever notice that? That no matter what happens, they could get a, a thousand dollar bonus. They could get a, a a brand new car, and they're like, hey, and they're like, yeah, it's not that good, because they always want something more. There's something more. There's something else missing in our life, and that's a clue to why we're never going to be happy. Because if you're not happy today, there's a good possibility you're not going to be happy tomorrow. 
And if you're not going to be happy t today or tomorrow, what day is it that you're going to decide to be happy? Come on. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, you have everything in your life right now that, that, that you need to be happy. And, if, and it, just because you can't, <laughs> I want to cry right now, just because you want to waste another day, just because you want to waste another day being who you were yesterday, today, I want to tell you, I want to challenge you, come on, let's break it off today. Let's, let's break off the plan of the enemy. You know, the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to kill your life. He's trying to steal your, your joy and your happy. He takes your joy first, by the way. And if you ain't got no, that, that actually is the first thing God gives you when you get saved, is joy. He comes and fills you. You know, you know how I know that? Because Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac's name was Joy. Joy. That's the thing he waited for. That's the thing he, he needed. He, he needed joy. It means, it, means, it means laughter. Come on, it means, it means when's the last time you had a good old laugh? You know, when's the last time you were you know, with your husband or with your wife or with your best friend or with your family and you just, you just laughed and you were like, because <laughs> you know? most of us don't even know how to laugh anymore because we're so stressed out. I got COVID, we got, we got, what else we got? We got, we got, we got COVID. I, I heard someone down in like Arizona or something, there's a plague breaking out now. I don't know what's going on down there, but, but you know what? There's <laughs> Psalm 91. There ain't no plague going to come near my dwelling. Amen. I'm, I'm going to pray right now the blood of Jesus against all of that. Amen. I rebuke it off of my life in Jesus name. I will live and not die. I will declare the works of the Lord in, in the land of the living. Amen. I will do it today. Come on, I'm going to do it today. I'm not going to wait until tomorrow. I'm going to do it today. I choose to be happy, okay? <laughs> I'm not that kind of happy. I want, I want a joy that comes up out of me. I want something in my spirit to change. I want something to change in my spirit so that my mind will catch up to it, okay? I don't need to figure it out. I just need to be happy because I have something awesome to be happy about. You know, I, the word given, okay, I'm going to draw a word picture in your mind, okay? Given, G-I-V-E-N. Say it with me, G-I-V-E-N. Did you know if you put uh, conjunction, okay, con that's a, con a word that you can add words to? And so in, the, in, the, in, the, in front of that, if we put F-O-R, for given, I have something to be happy about, right? Because I have been forgiven, Raise your hand if you've been forgiven. Come on. Now, I, I prayed this morning before I came up here, and I said, Jesus, come into my heart again, fresh and new. Come and be Lord of my life. Come on. Come and be the filter by which I live my life out. Be the breastplate of righteousness. I, righteousness means right standing with God. I didn't put that on myself. He gave it to me. It's a free gift. When I, when I said, Jesus, come and be Lord of my life, therefore I am free. I'm free from your expectation. I'm free from your thought. I'm free from whatever that is that I didn't, whatever hoop you want me to jump through, I can't jump through it because it's not my ability, not my job to jump through your hoop. It's my job to be forgiven. Forgiven. What a great gift to be forgiven. What a great, great gift to know that I am forgiven. To know that I can walk out every day the rest of my life without the expectation of whatever it is they want to put on us. We are forgiven. <sighs> Given, so I put four in front. Uh, let me put ESS for forgiveness. Givenness, givenness, forgiveness. For, for it's like the Loch Ness monster, kind of, sort of. But it's really, it's really something that we give away. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. That's something we give away, not because, not because we had it before we were forgiven. But we have experienced something in our life. Now I give away what I have experienced. Forgiveness. It's something I automatically... It's a, actually, I wanna, I'm going to use this word. We're mandated as Christians to give away what we have received. And most of us don't want to do it because it, takes, it, it costs you something. It costs you the prejudgment of someone else. It costs you the, the, that I might see something, but I can't keep it. Amen? I got to let it go. I got to let go of offense. Actually, someone really wise once said, he said one of the greatest things, it was a lady actually, she said one of the greatest pieces of advice, I don't know where they got it from, but she said one of the greatest pieces of advice she ever got was to, was to, to not be offended. <laughs> Does that mean you're never going to be offended? No. It means I'll be offended, but I'm not going to keep it. Amen? I'm going to let it go. Amen? 
Jesus said, blessed is he who is not offended in who? In me. Where is Jesus? He's in my heart. Amen. If the world hates him, they're going to hate you. Amen. If, they, <laughs> if the world didn't like him, they ain't going to like you either. Amen. And that's okay. We don't need them to like us. We don't. We don't need that liking. We need, we need to be, remember, we're forgiven. Therefore, I give away what I have received. Amen? Whew, that's really good. We're, we're always giving away uh, what we have. <laughs> I, wish, I wish we could, we could all have this little tray. You know, you ever gone to the mall before COVID? You know, you go to the mall and they had the little person with the tray and they got all the samples out there. I think it would be awesome if we walked into church, okay, or walked into work, and we said, uh, you know, I've been in a relationship with lots of people in my life, and I'm, you know, I'm so old now, okay, I want you to take a sample of my, what, what being in a relationship with me like. Here, just take a sample, and taste and see if I'm good, okay, if I'm worth it. Take, that's what Jesus did, right? That's what David said last week when we were talking about God is good. He said, I challenge you to taste and see the Lord is good right? God is good. When? Not, all, not just sometimes, all the time. He's good because he loves you. He's good because of he, he's, he's a loving, caring, loving, merciful God. Amen? You want a sample? <laughs> Come take a sample. Sample what I, what I give away. See, sample what we give away. I, 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 wonder, I, I wonder if that's just a challenge for tomorrow. But, but, <sighs> Do you see the flow? I just want you to see the flow. I'm going to rob a word from the last series. Flow. Do you see the flow from God to me to the world around me? Amen? From God to me to the one I don't like. From God to me to the circumstance that's in my life. From God to me, come on, let, let his glory arise in my life. Amen? God is good. In, God's goodness is not, not relegated to a to, to my interpretation, my finite ability, I said this last week, my finite ability to, to explain him away or to display him away, amen? I don't have to explain or display, I just have to be a display, I'm a reflection of his goodness to others, amen? What's inside, this is so powerful, what's inside of me is bigger than whatever, amen? What's inside of me is bigger than whatever, my, I'm going to say it again. What's inside of me? Because you guys don't believe me. What's inside of me or what's inside of you, the gift that is given to you is bigger than whatever, okay? It's bigger than whatever is going to come your way. God is bigger. God has given me a good gift, all right? And the good in me came from God, amen? So, so, so what's bigger? In 1 Timothy 4, verse 14 says, neglect not the gift, that is in me. Paul is admonishing Timothy. He's saying to Timothy, neglect not the gift that is in you. And I'm going to tell you this morning that each and every one of you, there's not a single person under the sound of my voice right now that isn't a gift. Amen? You go, I don't have nothing. Those are all excuses to keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Amen? Peter says, he says, we're all a lively stone. Amen? That means we're, we're a part of the temple of God. Whatever God is d building, you're a, p you're a piece of it. Amen? And you're good. Amen? And you have a gift in you. Amen? So, so uh, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is, was given thee by prophecy, by, by the laying on of the hands of the Presbyterian. He's, it's, he's basically saying, forget not, neglect not, amen? Despise not, and grieve not. Okay, let me say it again. Uh, forget not, neglect not, despise not, and grieve not. Amen? And so, so there has to come a time in our life when we're going to not forget who we are. Not who we are, but whose we are. Amen? Because people, they talk. Amen? People say things. And it's not about that. It's about, it's about Him in me. Amen? Him working through me. Amen? And so, last week when I was preaching, I was talking about a verse in Genesis chapter 50, I think it was around the 20th, 22 verse, 22nd verse, something like that. I was talking about the, uh, where, where Joseph was, his brothers had come to him after, uh, after Israel had died, Jacob had died, and, and, uh, and they, they, were, they were crazy. They were like, ah, yeah, we're sorry, we're sorry that we you know, sold you, and we're sorry that we, 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 we faked your death. We're sorry that we caused all this pain in your life. And Joseph was like, he was like chapter 50, 
Joseph was, was like, are you still here? Are you still there? Is this where you're at? And he, they were focused on what they did. Joseph was focused on where they were going. And there's a big difference right there, right? See the flow right there? The gift in Joseph was for the place they were going to. It wasn't, it wasn't where they came from. And most of us spend all of our life, I could preach a whole message right here about how we walk forward trying to look backwards. And, and if you're always looking backwards, you can't see where you're going. You can't see the future. You can't see hope. You know, most of us, whenever we have a trauma or a trial in our life, we, have a, we, we find ourselves in a position where we can't even find a dream anymore. Go, go up to someone who's struggling with something and say, what's your dream? What's your hope? And they're all, they won't have a dream or a hope because they're, they're too hurt. They're too discouraged. They're too despondent. They're too stuck in the old way. And Joseph has given us a clue as to going forward. You know, in the Bible, there's a, there's a, there's a thing called the year of Jubilee, right? The year of Jubilee is every 50 years. And I wondered for a while if I couldn't preach a message about how that, that Joseph was standing in chapter 50 of Genesis and saying, this is the year of Jubilee. This is the year I set you free. Amen. Not the year that I have been set free, but the year I set you free. And I wonder if it isn't possible that we couldn't just tie in for just a moment, Acts chapter 2, where it says, on the day of Pentecost, or when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pentecost just means 50, amen? The year of Jubilee. I wonder if, 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 if we couldn't tie in those two verses or connect those two, two chapters just for a moment and say, maybe, just maybe, if I could just turn and focus on what is ahead of me, what is, what is for me, who is with me, that, I, I, that just maybe the Holy Spirit wouldn't come and fill your mouth. Fill your life with good things so that you can be a blessing for others. You know, it wasn't just about filling. This is one of the problems we have in the church today. We think it's all about us. We think it's about how we feel, what it sounds like, what we can do, what, what, what it feels like, what it smells like, what, it lo- what people are going to think about us. But that's not really what it's about at all. The Holy Spirit is not about that. It's about boldness. It's about giving you the boldness to go through a suffering to go through forgiveness, to go through a challenge, to go through a, a circumstance, to go and be a blessing to the world because it's about somebody else. Church, it's not about us anymore. It's never really been about us. The Holy Spirit is for another person. Amen? It's a, it's a vehicle by which God will use you. To, he'll give you power. But I'm getting ahead of myself. He'll give you power. Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. And he said, Jesus said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. (laughs) Say, say, turn to your wife. (laughs) Say, why are you worried? It's not for you to know the time or the season. It's not for me either. I don't need to know the time or the season. That's not the reason. I don't need to know the why. It says, the Father hath put in his own power. It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Say this with me. God has power. He don't have to tell me nothing. Come on. He don't have to tell me nothing. Why, why is it that we as Christians want, want to pick up and do God's job for him? Why do we want to do God's job for him and not just let God be God? Amen? God should do his own job. Amen? Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Tell, tell your neighbor, stay in your lane. <laughs> and verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. You shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. I like that. I, I like, I'm, I'm almost a lawyer. I'm not quite a lawyer, but I'm almost a lawyer. And that word shall means that it's, it's irrevocable. That means that it has to happen. That means, that means if God put it in his word and he put the word shall in there, that's an irrevocable thing. It shall happen. It will happen. It's going to happen. Amen? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It has to happen. It, it can't not happen because he said shall. My Bible says, my Bible says, whoo, I'm getting off feeling the presence of God right now. I'm going to tell you right now, my Bible says the word of God is settled in heaven. It's not, it's not up to me to interpret it. Come on, it's not up to me to interpret what he settled in heaven. I don't have to go and explain it plain to anybody what his word says. I just have to live it. We can't even live it out. We wonder why we got no power. Ooh, okay, all right, all right. But he shall give power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And there's that colon right there. And here's the purpose. Here's the purpose of power. I want to I give you this. We, we think the purpose of power is for us. 
because we're so consumed by our own self. And, and he said, there's a colon, right? Uh, but you shall receive power, comma, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, colon, and ye shall be witnesses. 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 That means that something happened, I'm just supposed to talk about it. <laughs> come, come on. See, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. A witness didn't do it. A witness just talks about what happened. Amen? Amen. That means God's about to do something, and we're going to talk about it. Amen? I, he's going to do something, and I get to talk about it. He's the one that has the power. I'm the one that gets to talk about it. He has the power. I talk about it. He's got the power. I, got to, I, could, I could do this. I used to do this when I, was, uh, when I was younger. I had roller skate. We used to do a thing called rubber leg. And, and I had roller skates on, and I could probably still do it if I had my skates. My, I, ha, I still have my skates from when I was younger, but I don't think they fit my feet anymore because after all, uh, putting, up, putting up all this weight, holding it all up for all these years, my feet kind of expanded. They swelled up a little bit. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's what we got to do. We just got to remember, right? It's a flow, amen? It's a, it's a move of God. He's trying to flow through us. He's trying to work through us. It's His power. I just talk about what He did. Power is given, right, so that I can be a witness. Amen? Purpose is being a witness. That's my purpose. My purpose is to be a witness. Your purpose is to be a witness, right? That's why we were given. That's why we were forgiven. That's why we give away what we had. Forgiveness. <laughs> if I had some time, I would... I would teach you about the, the widow that cast in her two mites into offering. And Jesus, didn't look, he looked at everybody else that was given that day, but he only noticed the one who gave all. She gave all her life, all her living. She trusted God with everything, every hope, every dream. You know, she didn't even know if she's going to eat that night because she didn't have no more money to buy no more food. She didn't know if she going to, but she trusted God with all of it. I wonder if there's a Christian, if there's a person anywhere that would just say, you know what, God, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you all that I have, all my hopes, all my dreams, all my yesterdays, all the things I don't understand, all the things that I, <laughs> I've been working it, I've been working it. I wonder if we could give them that. I wonder if we could give them what we understand is right or wrong. I wonder if we could give them if we could just give it all to him. I wonder if we could just say, you know what, God? <sighs> Last time I felt like this, I ripped my shirt open and lost all my buttons. I'm going to tell you right now, there's something going on inside of me, and I don't know if I can just keep it inside of me anymore. And I'm, I just ripped my shirt, and I went, I had buttons went everywhere. This is my favorite, this is my favorite shirt, God. Why do you want me to do that? It's probably not him talking. Let me just say this. The time for excuses is over. Can I just say it again? The time for excuses is over. The time for excuses is over. Amen? It's over. It's over. Because God is doing a new thing today. Amen? New thing is about to happen. It's going to manifest. It's got to come. Amen? It's got to happen. Amen?